Um, I wanted to make this tutorial to explain to new Houdini users or people that are thinking about using Houdini how it actually works and maybe if you would want to use it. Now, right now I'm here inside Houdini and we've got this standard 3D viewport. We've got these different panes that we'll use to be able to control our objects or items inside uh, the 3D viewport or, or, or better yet, the 3D viewport will display what's going on. And so I wanna give a conceptual overview of what's going on in Houdini, how it's being utilized, and then maybe some pros and, pros and cons as to uh, why you would wanna use it and maybe why you wouldn't. So right here, I, I have this um, window open up here and, and we can see that this is, uh, it's saying a OBJ. So this stands for object. Um, we're, we're in what's called an object context right now. We see we have this slash, slash OBJ. And basically, um, I want you to think of this as a directory here inside of Houdini. Um, and we can click here and you see that there are other directories um, otherwise known as networks inside of Houdini. So there's a channel network, there's an image network, there's a material network, and so forth. And the reason I mentioned directories or folder structures is because that's kind of what's going on under the hood. And I wanted to kind of use that as a analogy um, to explain how Houdini works. So let's say I open Houdini and again we see these different contexts that could be represented as a simple file structure, okay? And I'm right now in the object file structure. So here, this object context is where we're going to be creating most things, especially if you're new to Houdini. We can go over the other contexts later, but I kinda wanted to get this out so you get a brief understanding of how you could get started. So I'm gonna just create a geometry object by I hit tab and typed in geo and then enter. And then it created this geometry object. This object has certain settings that you can apply to it globally. Um, but we can also double click and dive inside here. So now if we look at our file path, we are now in the object directory and we are inside the geo one object. So to make a one-to-one -one representation, if I were in a folder structure, I would double click, come into object, and there we go. We have a geometry folder. So if we dive inside the geometry folder, right now it's empty, and let's, let's put something in there. So I'm going to create a pig head, which is just a test geometry object that Houdini has built in. And what I'm going to do is add a color, okay? Um, so I'm gonna just hit tab, type in color, put this here, I'm going to plug this in. And so, so what these are, are these, these are different nodes, okay? And each node just does a simple function or maybe a complex function, but it just does a certain number of operations and then it sends that data through this pipe and then it goes to the next node and it does another operation. So I could change this color to red, okay? And then maybe I could drop down a normal node and I will plug this in. And now if I display this here to, to look at that, we see that we can add normals to our points and so I'm gonna check on points here of this object and I'm gonna turn on the normals, okay? So if I bypass or essentially turn this node off, Houdini does have these native normals um, that are always on objects, um, but just let, let's just forget that those are there. Um, and so essentially we don't have normals, but if, if I add this, then we have these blue point normals, okay? And then let's say maybe the last thing I wanna do is add a scatter node that will essentially scatter points all on our geometry and then transfer its closest to normal to those points. So this is great. We have these four nodes lined up 
and they go in a succession, okay? Now, if you change the order, they will do different things because it starts here and ends here. Um, going to our file structure, I'm gonna jump inside our geo just like we're here and I have already created some text files essentially to illustrate my point. So I'm gonna just double click on all these text files. Alrighty, let me minimize this for a sec. We'll line these up appropriately. Okay. All right, so essentially what's happening here is just think of these nodes as maybe a text file with instructions. So our first instruction is, hey, create a pig. Okay, we've created a pig. Now let's add a color. And so we added a color. So we said, create a pig, add the color red. And then what's the next thing? Oh, create normals from geometry. And then scatter points. Pretty basic. So if I were to change the order, it may or may not give me the same result. So why don't we take this color node and put it at the bottom and have it do that last. So I'm gonna click on this, wiggle it out, and drop it down here. Now in the end, we still have points with normals that are the color red that are all scattered from this pig. So we do get the same result, even though that these nodes are in a different order. However, if I were to maybe take out these normals, okay, so we're gonna take this normal out of the tree or, or this node structure, we scatter, we add a color, and then we plug in the normals. So essentially Houdini is looking at each one of these nodes as if, as if it's a line of instructions. So it's gonna say create a pig, scatter points, add red, and create normals. However, it can't create normals just on a set of points as it currently stands because normals are calculated from polygonal faces. Um, you could essentially create a normal attribute on points that will serve as a direction vector but for this purpose, we're not actually getting normals based on the surface of this pig, like we see here with these green normals. So we've switched the order of these nodes, and now we see that we do not have the same result as we did originally when we uh, first uh, put a color, normals, and then points. So order does matter. Um, and that's just something to keep in mind. But that is essentially how Houdini uh, operates. You're going to be creating objects in a node-based structure. It's non-destructive because you can always come and retrace your steps in different operations. So that's really nice and really powerful. And, and it's easy to understand from a messages point or, or a text file standpoint because Houdini is really powerful at letting you add your own code to a setup. So let's say we have this setup and I drop down a point wrangle node. This node allows me to type my own code. So let's just say, for example, I'm just going to set the color to be blue. Okay, so I just typed in this code and now it changes blue. So we could essentially copy this, paste this, I'm gonna rename this to um, my point wrangle node, rename that to five. And essentially what it would really be doing is say, uh, execute code, and that code is um, turn the color blue. So again, under the hood, all these operations are just simple, you know, commands. And so you can create your own custom commands, or you can use a set of pre-built commands, which are already established nodes. Inside of Houdini, you can create your own nodes and maybe code a little bit and make your own effects, or you can use a lot of 
pre-built nodes that are inside here. And this is just inside this context of objects. Inside other contexts, if we jump back out to Houdini, all these other contexts have different purposes and different nodes. And so that is just one preview of how Houdini is basically a set of file structures with different commands that you can alter according to your will. So it can be really powerful, but it can also be maybe a little hard to get started and wrap your mind around. But once you do, it gives you a lot of power to manipulate things the way you want to. So right here, I pulled up the Houdini film reel and I just wanted kind of to go through this. So we see these ocean waves and foam. These are generated in Houdini, the smoke, dust elements, uh, liquids, fluids, different type of simulations um, that go throughout here. You know, we've got a helicopter crashing, you know, breaking the helicopter, smoke, dust. Those elements are definitely going to be highly utilized if you do them in Houdini. Um, We've got, you know, these roll, this rolling wall and all this destruction here. We've got these different fire and explosion effects. Again, more explosions, clouds, um, procedurally modeling things, probably not animating. Um, you know, animating, you probably want to seek out Maya or Blender if you're going to be animating characters especially. Um, I've done some animating on different things of, you know, objects and vehicles, but... Houdini really shines with these big environments, um, helping create fluid sims, different trees, shrubberies, and, and things like that. Um, it's great for procedural texturing, different things you can do under the hood. So, so it's, it's definitely a very powerful program. Um, I try and use it as much as I can just to kind of push the limits of things. But again, it, it all, it, it, in the end, it's just a tool and as an artist or a technical artist, whatever you want to call yourself, you want to find the best tools for whatever you're doing. So maybe it's not the best for animating something, although you could animate something in here. Um, but maybe it's probably going to be better doing explosions and, and big effects than, you know, maybe using Maya or Blender. Um, but, but things will change over time and you've kind of got to assess what's the best um, tool set for your current options and then kind of invest in, and take a deep dive and, and learn those which would be my opinion but hopefully this helps you kind of get an overview of the basic structure of Houdini and kind of at a very very surface level how it works um, if you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try and respond there thanks